everyone and welcome to this video about oil painting brushes. <laughs> I do apologise for just randomly disappearing a moment ago and uh, my internet is being uh, rather difficult. <laughs> Which is so typical just when you start to stream. So anyway, uh, I do hope you enjoy this video and I do hope that this is finally coming to you guys in like with the sound okay and with you can hear my voice and hopefully it's all in sync so fingers crossed and let's begin so um i thought i'd make this video because i feel with not just beginners but anyone who has started oil painting it's very difficult or painting in general so even if you're somebody who paints in acrylic it's very difficult to know what to where to start when you are faced with a lot of brushes like say if you go into an art shop and you're like looking around you see tons and tons of brushes and you're just completely overwhelmed by um, what's going on uh, what's really nice is to have some kind of guide to know where you stand with brushes which ones to start where where do you begin and also it's also very difficult if you are online because um, it's very hard to know where to start in terms of what brushes to even get and um, I'm just checking that this is actually working at the moment I am paying attention um, so it's very difficult to know where to begin if you're faced with a lot of different brushes like for example on Amazon they have hundreds and hundreds of brushes and it's really hard to know which ones to buy and um, what brands to begin with and so I thought I'd give you my rundown of the best brands that I like and the different types of brushes that you will be faced with when you're entering a shop and you see brushes for the first time. And so, and also the brushes that I use. Now I'm not a brush fiend. I'm not somebody who has like 50 brushes and I don't use 10, even 10 brushes each time I paint. In actual fact, I use only about two brushes, uh, two main brushes as I'm painting on a canvas this size, but um, I have started to incorporate slightly more brushes, a few more brushes into my painting routine. I now use very little brushes, very minuscule brushes to do the fine detail, but I'm not somebody who is someone who creates uh, lots of different textures um, and replace each brush with lots of different designs on my canvas. As in some people like to use specific brushes for creating leaves for example, so they like to use fan brushes or they like to use um, bristle brushes to create that sort of stippling effect. I'm not one of those people, I really like to paint uh, with a more imaginative approach so I don't change a brush every time I want to create a different shape. I try to make my brush work into different shapes, if that makes sense. So uh, that's just my style of working. But if you like to use specific brushes for specific things, I will talk about that as well. So you won't be completely sort of um, alien to what I'm saying because everyone has a different technique and hopefully this video will help you depending on your technique. So to start with, uh, you will probably have, um, you'll be faced with a number of different types of brushes. Often the larger ones to create a big surface area, so when you want to cover a really large canvas, you may be faced with uh, really, really big brushes, flat ones that are square. And those are really amazing because you can cover a really large space very quickly. And if you like to paint on bigger canvases, then the square flat brushes are the ones that you would want to look into. Again, what I think is the best way to, the best technique to follow when you're starting out is to not choose brushes that are either too hard or too soft. I always feel it's best with brushes to go for a more middle ground. So you're looking for a brush that has some a certain amount of softness but you don't want it to be too soft to the point where it's weak. There's nothing worse in my personal opinion especially when it comes to oil paint than having a really weak brush because brushes um, for oil paint is very important that they have some density. This is so important for oil painting because oil paint itself is much thicker and so it's not a fluid paint. Some acrylic paints can be very thin and so you can use a very floppy brush to pick them up and actually you can work that way and you can work easily with them. But, and also you can use water with acrylics. 
but even when you add medium with uh, oil paints you are um, going to be using a paint that is much more thick so you need to then have a, a brush that can really hold that thickness and when I've had brush disasters in the past they have often been because my brush has been either really really hard or really weak and when you go to a brush display in your art shop your local art shop you will probably be faced with things words like bristle bristle brushes or hog hair brushes and you may feel somewhat overwhelmed like should you go for animal hair brushes should you go for stable brushes they're another one should you go for synthetic hair brushes so um these are all confusing names and can be so um, overwhelming and my personal preference and I really think the best thing to do and this is just my my advice but you can look at everyone else's advice and decide what you want to do but for me I think if you're starting out or oil painting the best thing to do is to buy one brush from a couple of brands as like maybe even three brands so get three brushes from different one from di each different brand and then you can try them out with different style different brand and you can test them out and see if they fit your style of painting because my style of painting it may not necessarily be your style of painting and so it's not worth my saying well you must get this type of brush because this is definitely going to work for you because I can't guarantee that those brushes will be um, perfect for your particular style so what I would say is try out a brush I would never recommend if you're uh, starting out to buy a set even now, even though I'm well practiced and well versed on painting, I generally don't buy sets. I did buy one fairly recently as a rare moment of weakness and I really regretted it because I got some dud uh, brushes, which I'll go into in a little bit. But that can happen because sometimes, even if a brand is, uh, you've bought it in a singular brush and it's so high quality, sometimes in the in the sets they don't have the same brush in that set and it's just a number of brushes that have perhaps a lesser quality and whilst you can make a saving it's not necessarily the best brushes in the set and I've bought many sets over the years from the internet without trying them out and been so disappointed with um, what I've received because they haven't lived up to what I thought they were going to and some of them have been from amazing brands like Windsor and Newton, Pro Art, uh, you know many of these amazing brands, Dela Rowney, many of these incredible brands and I have had some disasters with sets so I thought I'd go into some of my favourite brushes and my favourite shape of brushes. Also uh, I'm not sponsored by any of these, <laughs> I'm not sponsored by any of these brands um, on my channel I'm never like unless I would explicitly state if I was sponsored by a brand otherwise these are just products that I have tried uh, and there have been so many um, products that have failed for me for my particular style but that doesn't mean they'll necessarily fail for you I'm just giving you my personal feedback and I've been painting for very especially oil painting I've been painting for really a really long time so I feel like I've got a good uh, I'm well versed on what suits my style uh, so if your style is similar to mine or you'd like to paint like me uh, then this might be useful for you and so the type of brush that I think works really well in terms of and I actually haven't got one here which is just totally ideal um, is uh, so when you're talking about shapes I'm going to talk about shapes first so you can get these which are the more square brushes and these are the types of ones that I favour a lot now. I think that they are really, really nice for blocking in the colour, but because of the way that they're created, they are flat, they're the flat square ones. If you turn them to the side, sorry, I just ate a cookie and I'm really scared that you can see like what's in my teeth or something. Um, so, <laughs> moving on. So, in these uh, so the with the flat square ones what's really great is if you turn them this way and they suddenly become extremely thin and so when you're painting a flat area like this it's super easy they go like painting a wall and then when you turn them to the side you can get some really amazing detail so what I like to do is when I'm painting a tree for example I will use the flat side like this 
so that's painting the trunk of the tree and then to paint the branches I twist the brush to the side and turn the brush like this so the brush has so so the brush has two different functions at the moment but then it also has three because if you can see where the um there's a corner on the brush that's where you can create some very fine sort of dabbing motion and create some nice dots and things to add for the leaves so this is a perfect brush for painting a tree or anything even a person like you can create the flat body of the person then you can go around their face like this when you turn the brush to the side and then you can dot their sort of eyes and then create the hair by again turning the brush to the side um, quite often people have asked me in the past why I'm always twisting my brush and that's because like brushes as I mentioned before have so many different functions like I think when people um, are beginning and they look at a brush they think okay that's only got one use which is just to go like that but they don't they have so many different uses which is why I don't feel like anyone needs to use that many brushes when they're painting because you can create you can use your brush in so many different ways that you can create um incredible markings by with just one brush so uh, uh while whilst i think that is true um for much finer areas much smaller areas i do like to use an even smaller brush now these are the brushes that i would use for this size of paint painting obviously if i was to use a bigger canvas then uh, i would simply upgrade the sizes of my brushes but the shape and the technique and everything would remain the same so it's all dependent on the size that you like to work on because I'm not a huge I'm not you working on huge canvases at the moment these this size is absolutely perfect and people say to me well, how can you do big areas with just two small brushes but again because I'm not doing like the, the sky is not completely like flat blue uh, I'm painting in different clouds and I'm varying the colour so much that I'm actually working on much smaller areas so it's not like I'm you going on like a completely full-on area and just painting the whole thing and then going over it with the whole uh, another big layer it's a lot of smaller layers so it's not like a huge brush is not really required um and then so these two are both square these two are both square brushes and so um The smaller one is pretty much the same shape as the large one, but I've used them in exactly the same way. So turn it to the side to create much thinner marking and then using the corner for like any dots. Um, and in so many different ways, you can create all kinds of different shapes and it's just so versatile. Now in terms of, so these, these two are my absolute favorite. I'm using these constantly and I don't really feel like I need any other brushes. Although I have been working a couple more in in rotation just to kind of you know make it a little bit more exciting for myself um, but uh, these are pretty much the two that I use exclusively now and um, these are by the brand Pro Art. I think this brand is amazing but I have had some fails in their range so once again uh, you know be careful in big brands that you really uh, test out the brushes first just because a brand sells you buy an amazing brush from one brand doesn't mean that all their brushes are amazing or all their brushes are going to fit your needs so these particular ones do work amazingly well i did go to the shop uh, and it was cast art and i specifically went to find brushes i find brush shopping pretty boring <laughs> uh, i really enjoy paint shopping but brush shopping is not my favorite thing however i really enjoyed um using these and so i when these ones go a bit sort of uh, shabby looking, I will then, and they're out of shape and things, I will then purchase, I'll repurchase these exact ones and I may try out like one more. And so in terms of the actual feel of them, these are synthetic brushes and they are pretty dense in the middle. And this is a really great, um, important aspect of paint brushes for me. I like a dense centre core to the brush because when you're working with oil paint you need to have that density as I mentioned previously uh, and, but also at the same time they are definitely not hard brushes they are certainly on the softer side so when I am creating animal fur for example like you can see on this cat she's got some beautiful fur on her uh, that um, soft fur texture is created using 
these sort of soft bristles so it's really useful for that and I like that soft feel I don't like really really hard brushes because again they're just a little bit more hard work to use and also um, with bristle brushes and harder brushes, they will create a harder line. And so you obviously want to create um, textures that you desire in your painting. So if you want very soft, wispy, subtle kind of ethereal markings on your canvas, then the softer brushes are better. But once again, I don't use the very, very soft brushes because they are too floppy. They flop all over the place. The paint goes everywhere. I just don't like them at all. So. Hello to Stephen. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. So, um, yes. <laughs> so as I was saying, um, so that's in my rotation at the moment. And I'd just like to mention that whilst I'm using a um, more of the flatter, um, squarer brushes, I'm also a big fan of the filbert brushes and those are rounded and um, pretty much very similar to this shape but they have a rounded top to them and they're really amazing as well because you can get because they have a finer point on the top you can actually get some really fine detail and fine markings on those and the name of this actual um, paintbrush I should have mentioned that so these are the grey ones are their long handle so they're really great for um, if you're working on canvas I find so if you like to work on canvas longer handles are preferable because look I can reach all the way over to my painting and so when you're working on a on a canvas to be able to pull your hand back to the sort of tip of the paintbrush is really useful because then you can really map out what you're doing and you don't even need to really go so close I always feel like if you're working on a canvas and you have a really tiny paintbrush you're kind of your face is so close to the to the canvas and you can't stand back and see what you're doing so longer handles are really useful and so worth um thinking about when you're thinking about you know um i'm just going to say hello to this lovely human um okay so this um is what I would use what I'm using at the moment and they are called the sterling um, and they're for oil and acrylic so um, this one although it says it's filbert on the actual paintbrush um, I actually feel like it's more like a square flat brush <laughs> and so it because it doesn't quite have the point that most filbert brushes do and these are the 201 brushes and they're made in England and they are grey so these are my absolute favourite I think they're amazing um, and I highly recommend them so if you are in Art and you are looking for any oil or acrylic brushes I haven't used them with acrylic but I'm sure they're really good because um, they just have that right density and my oil brushes often work with acrylics as well and then if you are somebody who likes to do portraits I really like these which is the they are called let me just have a look these are also by Pro Art and they're called the Renaissance the Renaissance Sable brushes and brush and this is the 3 slash 16 whatever that means I'm sure there is some deep meaning to that but this is what they look like they these brushes are so beautiful to look at they're really really elegant um they're kind of like a dark green and they've got a gold thing here and so yeah they're super fancy and um I also find that they're really luxurious to use they were more expensive than the um other pro art ones and these are really 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 soft so what I find amazing about them is when you're painting a portrait uh, you can really um, once you place the paint onto the canvas you can really move the color around with this brush so what I like to do is put the colors onto the canvas and then kind of shear them out and blend them and kind of use this as a blending brush because it's so soft and um, kind of supple feeling it feels very um, smooth on the canvas and really great for blending like skin tones and eyes and anything that needs to have a 
ton of blending. I find that these work amazingly well. So this is a great option if you are somebody who loves to do portraiture and uh, really like to create um, very blended edges. So that's the Renaissance Sable brushes. And then finally, I've been using the these are also pro art and these are called the miniature painting brushes and I actually don't recommend these but I do really like this shape of brush which is the um, like super miniature tiny um, brushes for the very very fine detail and so this is called the this is a three slash zero so that's obviously the series number and um, the reason I don't recommend these is I don't know whether you can see but the these are the ones I bought in a set recently and unfortunately they have um, started to um, oh right oh good thank you Stephen so Stephen says I was looking for a better blend brush and I think I'll try that one yes it's really good and they also come in lots of different sizes this one the Renaissance Sable they come in lots of different sizes so if you need like one for a bigger area then check them out they're really good and they're believe they're also made in England and I got these from Cassart as well uh, but you can probably get them on Amazon. Um, all of these brushes are, like these brushes, the ones I mentioned my favourite ones, are also available on Amazon. You can get them in a set, just be careful that you've got the right ones because as I said before the Pro Arts brand have so many brushes, it's like a massive range and it's so easy to get kind of lost in amongst them and get the wrong ones so as long as they're these ones then I do recommend them and they do come in a set um, so I do recommend them. And then the ones that I don't recommend but um, I have used them and they still are good for that fine point but they just, the actual packaging themselves is horrendous. I got these in a set and um, unfortunately there's about four of them or five and then these very miniature fine detail brushes. And these ones I really recommend if you are into painting like surreal art or fantasy work portraits where you have to get like hyper realism hyper realism these will be perfect for uh, any kind of work like sea paintings anything that requires a very fine detail so like painting the sea waves everything like that if you like to create sort of that very super realistic uh, look in your art as well these types of brushes are brilliant and so worth investing in because um i'm just playing <laughs> Okay, so um, these are amazing because they um, get the really, really tiny, de tiny details. And because of this, you can create, like say, I really like using them for grass and like tiny flowers and like little um, butterflies and, you know, uh, the crescent moon, for example. You know, when you see a crescent moon and it's so thin, it's like a thin slither. This is amazing for that because you have this like super thin line and it looks really... Uh, great in sort of fantasy work so these types of brushes are brilliant but uh, these particular ones the when I've been using them I've only had them for like a few weeks and the paint started to peel off them um, and also they just um, are a little bit too soft for me I think that they needed to be more dense and I feel like the miniature brushes are the most difficult to get right than the most difficult to find because they're it's so hard to sorry I have a really squeaky chair incidentally um they're the most difficult to find I, I don't know how to fix this problem maybe I just like get some oil on it or something I don't even think that works because it's like a plastic chair um and so these ones are um like you have to have the exact right they've got to be the right density, they have to be the right thickness, they have to have enough strength in them to hold up and unfortunately I've found in the past so many times when I've bought this type of a brush that they've just kind of like flopped all over the place and whilst I'm painting I haven't been able to keep control of the actual paintbrush and I found this to be the case but this is definitely one of the better ones so even though the packaging and like the actual brush itself like the, the paint is kind of peeling off the brush Despite that, the actual brush itself, I feel like it has been the best I've found so far. And I've tried a ton of different brands. And so whilst this is the best so far, it's still not ideal and it's not my favorite brush. So I'm not gonna buy these again, but I am using them. And um, if you 
you know, happen to find them maybe in a Cyber Monday or something really, really cheap, then they're certainly not bad, but they're not my personal ideal for, for our brushes. So that pretty much concludes like my four favourites at the moment. And I do think they are amazing. I highly recommend them. Uh, obviously, uh, it all depends on your particular style. So I do think that, um, as I mentioned before, if I mentioned that they're suited to a particular type of painting, then um, hopefully it will be useful if you are interested in checking them out. And um, Again, like I wouldn't recommend just buying random sets off Amazon and stuff like that without actually testing a brush fully because I just feel like it could end up being a massive waste of money. Uh, I've wasted more money on sets of brushes than I have actually buying individual ones. Um, I've also found that buying a really, really expensive paintbrush doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the best one. I find that some of the Windsor & Newton really expensive ones. Hello, Art & Art, it's great to see you. Hello. I, I, your art is amazing. And um, I'm sure you probably don't need advice on brushes because your art always looks beautiful. And so I think that, um, like there's a, there's a brush that I bought from Windsor & Newton that was really, expensive and it did actually turn out to be amazing so I tried to find it again on Amazon and wasn't able to find it so I bought like a similar one and it, that one turned out to be a disaster <laughs> it was like in the same series and everything so I feel like you get um it's like hit and miss is that the right expression I think it is uh it's hit and miss and so you don't know exactly what you're going to get so in my opinion I think it's better just to buy individual brushes, go down to the art store if you can, uh, if not just buy an individual brush and um, there is, I, I would recommend trying, if it's oil painting you're looking for, I would recommend trying to find a, a specialist art store and then call them up. I'm the most irritating person because I always ring up art stores and ask them really annoying complex questions and then <laughs> sometimes they actually hang up on me, I'll tell you a funny story in a moment, but like um, I feel like that's the most important thing is to make sure that you, um, you know, go to an art store and um, just like, yeah, sorry, ring up an art store if you can't get down to one and um, then um, check out what they say. And like, say, if you're a beginner, you can just say, oh, look, I'm a beginner and this is my particular style of art and just sort of tell them the type of thing that you're looking for. Now there is a big debate about animal hair and synthetic brushes, uh, so I wasn't actually planning to touch on that, but since I have a little bit of time, I think it might be quite interesting to touch upon it. Um, I always think that it's important to, um, to um, kind of like weigh out the options for yourself and um, kind of not feel pressured to go either way because obviously we all have different opinions about it. I can't say that, like, don't buy a particular type of brush because it has animal hair, because I would be a hypocrite, I eat meat, so, so um, I don't eat, like, tons of meat, but I, I do try to eat, like, a little bit of meat, because I feel like it's important for my health, but at the same time, like, I do really respect vegetarians and, like, people who kind of cut out meat because I hate cruelty to animals, so that's just another side thing, but, like, um, it's very difficult to know also how um, how animal how animal hair brushes are made because you don't see much information about it and I think that naturally the inclination is to just go and purchase a brush and then um, not think about it. I know that sounds bad, but I know that's, that's the way some people are, and I've seen a lot of art channels that that have artists that strongly like strongly stress that their favorite brushes are animal hair brushes they won't use anything else and um, they think the synthetic ones are rubbish for me i really like the synthetic ones and uh, because they're cruelty free as well it's like an added bonus for me i think because i like the synthetic ones so much why would i buy 
the animal hair ones when you know I don't know about how ethically sourced the animal hair ones are I'm sure there are brands that do sort of have ethically sourced animal hair brushes but I don't know I don't know enough about that I don't know enough about the brands and the companies as soon as I see animal hair it's kind of like questionable as to how the the brushes are obtained and all that stuff so um for me I think if I can go synthetic wherever I can and when I if I can go non-toxic whenever I can and recyclable wherever I can then I might as well do it because it makes me feel a bit better about myself if that makes sense so in this case because I like the um synthetic ones uh, I'm, I'm sticking to that I have tried animal hair ones before in an art class and um, to be perfectly honest it's not something that I can really that I prefer I actually just um, the with the synthetic ones I just feel like they have they have like a they just they're better for me and so yeah I just think that they're they're the ones that I primarily use so it's, I feel like it's up to the individual to make a decision and um, I know that there are squirrel hair ones and um, you know hog hair again uh, and so I'm you know they I don't know how they're obtained that's the problem so it's kind of like it's up to you to make your own decision on it I feel better about not using the animal hair ones and um the synthetic ones for me just work so much better on my paintings anyway so yeah so I kind of rambled about that but <laughs> but if you are someone who swears by the animal hair ones and let me know I think even if I was to try an animal hair brush um like a hog hair or a squirrel hair one um I don't think I would change my brushes anyway so yeah, I'm just interested to know if there is anyone out there. I have seen other artists on YouTube who are just like, synthetic hair is trash. But like, but like the purists, the purists, some purist oil painters, they make me laugh so much. I have great respect for them, like I'm not insulting them in any way, but like there are some purist art uh, oil painters who don't like to use, um, don't ever use non-toxic paints they don't use non-toxic um like mediums they don't like any of that they'll use lead in their in their mediums they'll use lead in their paints they'll use all the cadmiums they'll use um all of the kind of like um you know questionable they use rabbit skin glue in their sizing they use all of that and um i try to avoid it but i can understand why there are some artists some oil painters who just love using it because that's how the old masters used to paint and that's the very purest kind of traditional style and so I understand why there are so many artists who swear by those techniques and who swear by those art materials so I'm not um insulting them in any way I can totally understand where they're coming from it's just, I suppose I'm from like the modern, you know, what's it, millennial, <laughs> the millennial art movement where we're all, we're all like non-toxic and, you know, no odours and, you know, make sure everything is recyclable and all of this stuff. And I know it probably annoys a lot of um, paint makers and oil painters who just prefer the like the really traditional old master techniques and they're like, we've got to stick to the way that the old masters used to do it. And the old master techniques are incredible. Like I can't deny that because I've seen, I've seen artists use those old master techniques and I've seen how incredible their work is. So it's not like I can even deny what they're saying is true. It is true. That is, uh, they are brilliant uh, techniques. They are amazing uh, materials, but I guess I'm just, you know, um, like, a hopeless millennial I'm a snowflake millennial and uh, yeah I go for all the synthetic man-made recyclable stuff I can <laughs> so there we are uh, so I hope you enjoyed this little painting chat and um, chat about brushes so just as a recap these are like the synthetic ones these two are my absolute favorite this was a dud because um, I just the, the paint peeling off was just not my jam but like the actual paint brush itself is not bad I mean probably the best one I've tried in that particular genre 
and um, I hope that if you have any questions about like brushes or anything like that you can come and ask me and I will give the best advice I can. A lot of people ask me on Instagram and like send me DMs on Instagram but um, I just find it hard hard to like summarise what you're supposed to do in just like a DM. Like it would be more useful to come on my live streams and just ask me because I started doing live streams that's really quite useful or maybe I should make a video just answering everyone's questions because I do get a lot of dms about um media like oil painting mediums I just had one recently for, from someone who was so confused about uh, the difference between linseed oil and um gel mediums which is again it's um a bit of a conundrum like if you've never used the gambling ones before I think he was asking about gambling so um yeah, if you guys have any questions, then feel free to ask me and um, don't feel like you should be shy because I was once a beginner and sometimes I still feel like a beginner even though I've been painting for so long, isn't that crazy? But I just feel like, um, you know, you have to start somewhere and, and when you're in an art class, it can be so intimidating to ask the teacher. Like, you know, if everyone knows what they're doing and you're like, oh no, help me, I don't know what's going on. Um, you know, it can be so embarrassing. Whereas I feel like on YouTube, there's no judgment because, you know, we're all, uh, we're all equals and, um, and we all kind of struggle with certain things. This painting behind me still isn't finished. <laughs> and I was supposed to do a live stream of myself painting, but I had such difficulty just setting everything up that I just gave up. And like, I think maybe I should do it tomorrow. Um, or maybe sometime in the week, but I really need to start another painting and um, this is all running so far behind. So um, if you're interested in watching like a, a time lapse, no, a live stream of this painting, then I will try to try to do a, a live stream soon. And um, I'm trying to think of anything else I know about what, about painting brushes like I can talk about. I think I've spoken about almost everything. Um, I have tried um, some brushes from Amazon, like just random ones that didn't have a brand. <laughs> and some of them have actually been quite good. Oh, and Royal Langernickel, I didn't mention them. Royal Langernickel is another brand that's really, really good. They have all different types of series of brushes though. And so I believe it's the Zen collection that they sell on Amazon. They quite often have like them really discounted. They were like a set. Those are the brushes that I kind of um, was experimenting with for a while because I was going through a kind of transition period with brushes. and. Um, I just thought they would be really, um, I saw them like on a deal or something on Amazon, I thought, well, well, why not? And they actually turned out to be really, really good. Um, they like have uh, the clear, it's like a clear handle. I believe they're called the Zen collection. Um, and um, yes, I agree with you, Stephen. And thank you so much, Art in Art. That's so kind. I'm so glad you like the cat. Yes, she is um, resting at the moment. <laughs> I do really love um, this type of cat in British blue. They're just so beautiful. And so I'm so glad you like it. I, I adore all your art. It's so magical and beautiful. And um, yeah, I just think you're amazing. Like another amazing artist on here. And um, I'm going to read out Stephen's comment just because it might be helpful to others. Uh, so Stephen writes, I use both natural and synthetic depending on what I'm painting, the shape, Softness, hardness for the type of marks I wish to make is my guide, same. Uh, for my paintings, you need to determine what brush to select. That's very interesting. I tend to use the same brushes for every painting, but that's really interesting you use different ones. And I think that that is um, a technique that a lot of artists use. I've seen a lot of artists um, in art classes and like online as well, just kind of select different types of brushes for, their, for what they painting at that time um, which I find really interesting I think if I had um, I think if I was a more kind of broad painter like if I painted a lot of different types of things I probably would do the same however I have kind of a very narrow scope on what I'm painting I like my painting mostly fantasy or landscape so I don't have a ton of variation in my work but I think if I was like had more of a varied style I would probably I would probably do the same so thank you so much for watching everyone. I hope you've enjoyed this little live stream. Again, it wasn't very long. Uh, I feel like lots of people do live streams for like two hours and I'm like, 
40 minutes. I, I've run out of steam. <laughs> but I feel like this was uh, all I knew about um, my brushes at the moment. But when I get some more information, I will, of course, let you know. So um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining me on this little chat. And thank you so much um, for joining me and um, having this lovely chat. And I will see you all. Oh, thank you so much, Stephen. That's very kind. And um, I will see you all very soon. Take care, guys. <laughs>